Godzilla Kong will feature a duel between two of the most dexterous titans in the MonsterVerse. On one end, the ape titan known for its superb leaping abilities, high intelligence, and weapon-wielding capabilities, Titanus Kong, King of Hollow Earth. Or so we thought. GXK brings forth a new adversary. Possibly surpassing Kong in all of the mentioned attributes, a tyrant of larger proportions than Kong, ruling over an empire of blood. This is Scar King. But will Kong's weapons give him an edge? Will this gauntlet grant him an edge over Scar King's whiplash? In this episode, we will discuss the many advantages their weapons bring to the battlefield and find out whether or not Kong will be able to steal the title of King from his adversary. Coming up, Kong's weapons versus Scar King's whip slash explained. To begin, we'll quickly cover Kong's current weapon, the Battle Axe, which is comprised of a long bone, possibly a femur of another titan, and the dorsal plate of a Gojira specimen. This weapon, apart from serving as an axe, also possesses several abilities such as harnessing Hollow Earth energy and even atomic breath. While charged, this weapon is heated and capable of cutting through extremely hardened materials such as Mechagodzilla's titanium alloy. Even while not hardened, this weapon can pierce stone. But one of the things that sets this axe apart from the weaponry used in the past by Kong is the fact that weapons such as these can inflict high piercing power thanks to its mechanics. In close combat, battle axes have always been notorious for their ability to inflict deep wounds thanks to the weight of the blade in comparison with the lighter handle. This counterweight of sorts multiplies the force of the arm swing. All of this energy will now be inflicted on the very small surface area of an axe, the blade's edge. With Kong's axe, however, this serves not only as a blade, but also a pickaxe of sorts, since the surface area of these tips is much smaller than that of a bladed edge. The result? Deep, fatal wounds if hit in the correct area. That's if Kong manages to connect. As lethal as these weapons sound, there are huge drawbacks with using a battle axe. First off, because of the weighted blade, the result of missing a target is the weight of the blade pulling the wielder down, exposing the combatant to attack from the opponent, much more likely against an agile foe, and it just so happens that Kong will likely face just that. Now, under what circumstance will Kong use this gauntlet, and how will this give Kong the edge? The use of this apparatus seems to serve two purposes, for offense and as a brace of sorts. Recall that in this clip we witness an already evolved Godzilla alongside a Kong with this glove, suggesting that Kong 1 lost the axe and 2 also used this apparatus as an upgrade. Kong possibly lost this axe against Scar King and was maybe injured in the act, but how? What about Scar King made Kong lose his weapon and possibly get handicapped? Scar King, as we've seen him so far, is possibly much taller than Kong. Not necessarily more robust, but given his time in the Hollow Earth, this guy probably belongs to a battle-hardened species whose way of life is combat. Against a more powerful and experienced foe, it is no secret that Kong will already be at a huge disadvantage against Scar King and his kind. This gets pushed further with the presence of this weapon, a whip. Officially referred to as a whip slash, this word itself might give us further clues as to how this weapon is actually used. Note that this is not a whip lash, which by definition is the flexible part of the whip. But why does Scar King wield a whip and not any other weapon? There are many reasons for this. The description for Scar King in many of the recently revealed merchandise states that this guy rules over a fiery kingdom wielding this whip. In the trailer, we witnessed many great ape titans possibly belonging to Kong species being held, maybe against their will, by Scar King and his kind. This whip of sorts may indicate that Scar King uses this as a tool also, a tool which can be used to subjugate other titans. Whips throughout time have been a symbol of subjugation and forced servitude under a tyrannical force, with the mentioned weapon used to beat down on insubordinate individuals used as a tool for punishment or even executions. But are whips used as weapons? They can be, but the use of whips is reserved for those who are extremely dexterous with lots of practice, which are attributes of Scar King. 
Whips in combat are rarely used, and it takes a really practiced arm and hand to use one with purpose. The lash section of the whip forms a U-shape once whipped. This U-shape travels down the length of the whip until it gets to this very small tip. What makes the cracking sound is just the tip. Why? Because it moves so fast that it surpasses the sound barrier. This phenomenon is known as conservation of energy. A whip with a weighted tip instead of a loose string will allow this weapon to not only strike victims and injure them, but also latch onto things. In this case, weapons, limbs, or even the neck of some opponents. That's assuming this whip is shaped like this thicker on the handle and thinner on the striking end. But if we look closely, Scar King's Whip Slash seems to be built a lot differently. How does this affect combat? Let's find out. Enjoying this episode? Please don't forget to subscribe and check out our newly released merch series inspired by GXK. Links below. The physics between these two different whip shapes will vary a lot thanks to two key differences, their composition and the obvious weighted tip. Scar King's whip seems to be composed of a long serpentine vertebrate skeleton, perhaps belonging to a warbat or another long reptile. This is fastened together by either ligaments that are preserved within the vertebrae or by some sort of roping fashioned by this great ape. The result is a flexible whip-like tool capable of transferring energy similar to these whips. The key difference, however, is this section of the weapon, a titan's jaw. This could be either that of a warbat given the presence of these two fangs on the bottom jaw, or the same jawbone from an animal of this unknown species. The point is that unlike your traditional whip, all the kinetic energy transferred down this whip will now be transferred to this jawbone, not a small tip. This causes a totally different type of damage. The business end of a regular whip is a very small counterweight, or something as thin as a string. A proficient wielder can accurately take out something as small as an eye or simply lacerate with the tip. But this whip now has a skull. And Scar King merch images do confirm where this weapon is gripped from, revealing that this is indeed that striking part of the weapon. Once whipped, this kinetic energy will most likely reach these fangs. If these land on a fleshy surface, they will most definitely cut. But there's more to this particular jawbone. If this is indeed a warbat, this whip may do more than just cut, but also pierce armor. Why? Warbats are known to have fangs that can pierce through armored vehicles, meaning that this weapon could be lethal if it lands on the right area, such as the head of another kaiju. Who knows how many titans have met their demise at the end of this weapon? This brings us back to Kong, who will most definitely be introduced to Scar King's Whip Slash. In a confrontation between Kong and Scar King, one of the most important things to consider is reach. Scar King arguably has longer reach already thanks to his longer arms and possibly taller stature. This whip slash makes things even more difficult, making Kong unable to reach Scar King unless he throws his weapon and in the act disarms himself. A common counter against a combatant holding a whip is disarming him by allowing the whip to wrap around the arm and pulling back. Here, the mechanics of this weapon make it difficult to allow that without potentially injuring yourself first, thanks to the fanged jaw at the tip. This jaw, and in this case a weighted tip, will make it easier for this to wrap around objects potentially disarming Kong. So here's where Kong may possibly lose his weapon and get injured. After all, this glove is seen to be on Kong's right hand, which is his arm of choice when wielding the axe. In the film, Kong will likely lose his weapon, get injured, and require some sort of help. This introduces us to the Beast Glove. The acronym BEAST stands for Bioenhanced Anatomic Seismic Thunder Glove. There's a lot to unpack here, but to begin this weapon breakdown, we'll begin with the bioenhanced part. Bioenhancement implies that this glove will be aided by Kong himself, enhancing his earth-shattering strength and making each impact even more powerful. Anatomic probably refers to the mechanization of Kong's arm thanks to this glove. Again, if Kong did indeed get this arm injured, this glove serves as an anatomical 
blade. Fastened around the forearm, wrist, and secured around each tip of the finger, these brass knuckles basically harden the striking end of the clenched fist. So instead of getting hit by a mixture of skin, flesh, and bone, this beast glove removes any soft tissue from the equation, making this an even more critical hit. But this weapon just gets more interesting. The S and T of this acronym stand for Seismic Thunder. If these extra hard punches weren't enough, a glove capable of amplifying impact force to something that can shake the ground violently will most definitely cause some pretty serious damage to a kaiju like Scar King. In fact, some of the figure descriptions describing this beast glove claim that this weapon inflicts hits similar to meteor impacts with every punch. Not to mention any possible electrical element that may transfer deadly amounts of electric shocks to the victim. So, will this weapon be enough to neutralize Scar King's Whip Slash? Unfortunately, this weapon still does not solve the matter of having less reach than the whip. However, this arm will now be armored enough to possibly aid in catching the end of this whip without incurring any damage this time. Note that Kong is no stranger to ball and chain type weaponry. In fact, he was pretty good at using flexible weighted weapons back when he was a teenager. Maybe Kong has a few lessons to teach Scar King after all. Note that this may not be all Scar King's whip can do. Perhaps there's another kaiju that Scar King controls with this whip. Something about this whip seems to be… lacking. We'll cover this unknown secret in a later episode and discuss a new kaiju that may be involved with this missing part. Subscribe to not miss any more episodes on GXK and your favorite kaiju. See you in the next episode!